In this video, we're going to focus on how we can give a nice background color on Hoover. So what we're really doing is we're going to color what we call the category segment. You can see here, we're moving here and give it every time a nice color. Of course, the first one here will not work because it will respond to the very beginning, but this one here is related to that. So let's start to explore how to do this. So let's start to explore how to color the chart background on Hoover in Chart.js. So the first thing what I want to do here is, of course, get the default code, which you can find on Chart.js3.com getting started. This link is also in the description box. Scroll down here and then copy this chunk of code here. Once you copy this, and if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video here, which explains it all. I'm going to paste this all in there. And once I did that, I will cut out the title above and put that in here. Save that, refresh, there we are. So now we have this, and what I want to do now is I want to convert this into a line chart, so it will look more appealing. So I'm going to scroll down here and then just say here, line chart, save this, and we say border with, well, this can be removed, by default it's always three, there we are. All right, so now we have this, and then probably what would be nice here is a point hoover effect that would be more appealing. However, I will be using this color, so I want to copy these colors for now but just paste them in there. Later on, I'll be using them. Then, uh, I guess my shortcut of comment out doesn't work. All right, there you are. Now it works. So what I want to do is I want to grab only the single color here. And this one as well. So we're going to save that. There we are. So now we have this. But of course, when you hover over this, I want to make sure that the background color here converts accordingly. So what I want to do here now is, well, we can say here, this background color will be solid. So it is solid like this, but then when you hover over it, it will become bigger, but the inner part, the point, will become white. So what I'm going to say here is, uh, hover background color. And this will be eventually white. So if I save that, refresh, you hover over it, you can see now it becomes white. And you can see here what I want to do here is the uh, point radius or the point hoover radius. That's the one I need because once we, all, once we hoover on the point, I'll say this will be about 7 pixels. Save that. Refresh. All right. So if you hover over it, there you are. That becomes nice. And then you can see here, I guess here we can make this a point, uh, the border point that can be increased as well. So I'm going to say point hoover border let's make this three pixels put a comma here save that refresh and then there you are or at least it doesn't work let me just check quickly all right i already figured out it's the point hoover border width save that refresh now we have this very nice shape here all right so what i want to do is i want to first temporarily hide the tooltip because we don't need it now later on i'll show it we'll keep put it back but it just, it's very distracting. So I'm going to say here, plugins tool tip, then enable, enable false, put a comma here, save that, refresh. So now only the Hoover effect works, beautiful. So what we're going to do now is basically the following. We're going to work on this item here, or at least on the background. And what I want to do is once we Hoover over a certain point, this entire point here will start to get a color. And the color will be basically these rainbow colors we have here ready. So let's start to do that. So to do this, I need to create first a plugin. So I'm going to say here, uh, in the options, put a comma here, I'll say plugins, and then I'm going to put a bracket, and we can just say here, background color. Then I'm going to copy this, or let me just give this a unique name because this might be used somewhere else. So background color or I'll just do it like this. Hoover, and then with capital B here. Hoover background color or colors. All right, so we have that. And then I'm going to say here slash slash this plugin block because it's our block here. And then we're going to say a constant this equals, let say ID, and then this will be that, but although we won't be using it, so it doesn't matter. And here we're going to select the timing of when would we like to draw this. The background color should be behind this line here. So that will mean that the drawing time will be behind or basically be before 
the data set has been drawn. So we first draw this background color and then the data set. So we're going to say here, before data sets, we draw these colors. And then what we can grab here, chart. There are multiple arguments, but chart is the one that we always use, or personally, for me, 99% of the time, this is the one we need. So then what I want to do here, we're going to do here a object destruction regarding this. So I'm going to say constant, curly braces, equal that. And then what I want to do here is I want to break it down by an object destructuring. And an object destructuring would mean we get an object and we split them out into multiple items so we can use their shorthand. So for example, here, I need to have the CTX. What I will be needing here as well as the tooltip. And I will be using the chart area. And understanding chart area is very essential. If you want to know that, I highly recommend you to watch my other video about how to uh, understanding chart area in chart.js. The link will be also at the very end of the video. You will see the link as well. So then we say your top, bottom, left, right, width, and height. Uh, basically, in essence, the chart area is the drawing area with these lines here. This is basically the top line. This is the bottom line. This is the left line and the right line. And then, of course, the width would be from the pixels from here to there. And of course, the height pixel top to bottom here. So remember, if you look at it very carefully, the canvas is not that same size. The canvas is here, even including up here and down here. So this is very important. So there's a different, the chart area is different in size compared to the canvas. All right. So if you want to know more, watch the other video to understand it deeply. So now we have this one. And what I want to do here, comma, I want to say as well, the scales, they, will, they might, might be very useful here. Let's say your scales x and y because we need to have the coordinates. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start to draw a item. And how are we going to draw them? Well, basically, we need to understand how will we trigger. For example, if we are on here, this will be the Hoover effect. We need to trigger here something or we need to draw something. So let's draw something very simple. And afterwards, I'm going to show you how you can trigger it accordingly so it will appear. appear. So what I'm going to do here is Let's say your CTX, and I'm going to just make it um, uh, font, no, sorry, not font style, this is fill style. And this will be equal to black. I'll just make it black for now. And then what we want to do here is a CTX, and then this CTX would be the fill rectangle. And the fill rectangle would say our starting point, let's say X and Y, so starting point 10, 10, and then we make it like a square if we do like this and just draw this refresh you can see here we get this all right what i really want is instead of this i want to for example show it only when we hover over an item so what we're going to do now is we're going to create here basically this well or let me show you and this is the reason why i had the tooltip here ready let's go to the tooltip if i save this refresh open up the developer tab now you can see here a lot of this information don't worry about it all we need to go, because basically we are now in the tooltip, and all we need to know is basically this one here. Active, yes or no. I'm going to grab this, because we need this one, because right now it says a length of none, or zero. Meaning it's not active. Why? Because the whole moment it will be active is the moment we hover over it. Of course, if I move away again, you can see it just jumps away. So I'm going to show it to you just by doing this active, and we just save that refresh. You can see here now, as I hover over, the items and then if I click on this or not even click hover over a uh, point you can see here what happens you get the length you get the information here and we get all the information we don't need any of this information all I need to know is are we hovering on a item yes or no and if so I want to show this item here or this square here so once we have this basically I need to create that this active should be only like this Save, refresh, then hover over it. You can see it, there you are. Then here, as we hover again, there we are. And then here, it shows you an undefined because of the animation effect. But basically, once the animation effect is away from the uh, tooltip, at that moment, it disappears and you can see we don't get any message anymore. This is very important. Of course, when we enable this, we should not have any more a undefined item. So if I go here, then we move, oh, all right, we get it, but you can see this is basically the very short, like a split second of effect here. 
All right, let's put it back on file to refresh. So now what I want to do is I want to just make sure that once we have this, I want to show this. But once we are away from that point, in that case, I want to hide it again. So I want to do an if statement. And this if statement is very straightforward. If there would be any length, or at least one length in here, in that case, show this. If not, hide it or don't show anything at all. So you go here. All right, you can see here, and then it disappears. Here, shows, go, beautiful. So we have this now, and basically this is very important because now we can start to do more items with it. What I want to do eventually is, of course, cover this entire area with a color. So what we need to do here is let's start to draw now the item itself. So we have this, and now what we need to do here is start working with basically understanding which color we want to grab and uh, what would be the eventually the width of specifically the item here because so there's two things so let's, let's calculate first the width here and later on it must be intelligent enough for example if i hover over this point i want to cover this area here if i hover here it will cover this etc etc so this is essential but that will be later on let's first cover top to bottom because that's the easiest part to do so what i'm going to say here is the following i want to calculate this so how do we do this i need to calculate on the x scale basically the information what i need is this well let's grab this i'm going to put it in here save that refresh all right so we get all this information here scroll down and then you can see here we have here the ticks you click on the ticks you get all this information but i don't need that one i need the grid line items and the grid line items shows us nicely what we need this is very important to understand because here we have the pixels and we also have here basically the pixel starting which would be here at 27 the next one would be under 28 which would be here so what we need is from the grid line items index 0 and index 1 the starting and ending here so basically i need tx1 or we can even say x1 and then here i need x2 sorry there's this one here or also x1 but index one all right so to make sure we don't get confused i'm going to just look what is the official position of this i'm going to say here all right it's underscore grid line items with capital i zero dot x1 all right so we say here underscore grid line items with capital i and was an s zero dot x1 so if i do this then i should also get the other one that would be the one next in line if i save that refresh all right so we get an information here we cannot read before the item all right so let's see what's going on here uh why is this not working before the data sets that's true so let me double check here what's going on probably i'm missing something here so x grid line items and then what is it 90 for 84 you can see here the errors on 84 so let's save this again refresh all right can i get this before data set draw so let me quickly check what is going on all right so i checked again it is a yes a very very bad mistake mine or a sloppy mistake so with the grid lines here the grid line items i was indicating capital i but i didn't check here the grid line needs to be also capital L. So if I save this, it should work here nicely. There we are. So now we have this again. And this works. And then what we wanted to do was having two items. We can do this and zero. And we should have two. 27 and 128 plus. So now we have this. And basically this would indicate our width. So what we can do now is here we can indicate our starting point and the width. So what I will do here, or at least our starting point, we can start to calculate. And what is our starting point? That will be, well, this will be probably a bit more dynamic, but let's do it first like this, all right? The reason why this will be dynamic, it will be dependent on wherever we hover. So we have to work, work on that. But this one here must be the width, and the width is calculated by having these two deducted from each other. So I'm going to say here, let new width, uh, let, I guess a new width like that. 
equals and then we're going to deduct the following we're going to say here grab this one then minus that number one once we have this we should have here now the official width and this one here is like the y position and this one would be the height so how do we calculate that we cannot use here width because we already have a term here of width but this height is exactly what we need here that's just this one here in this case this is identical and then we want to start at the very top remember the top is this border line here or this this line here of the chart area so we're going to put that in there we're going to save that and then refresh all right so if we hover over it we should see all right we get one undesirable effect here fair enough what we need to do here probably is to to do it differently i realize that we need to have not this one we should do probably one and two and the reason why is we have here still the left issue so if i save this now it will be calculating the left and then it will deduct from each other accordingly if i refresh here do we get that well apparently not as well um that would mean that this is probably our issue so let's put this one in let's put this on number one and see how this looks like all right so you can see if this works then later on we have to do something with the very beginning here so that will mean that here we need to create an if statement that if it would be on here that would be zero then i want to just hide the color here just set color on nothing because you can see or not not the color or nothing but maybe the the uh, uh shape should be on zero pixels so it will not be drawn at all so that's very important so let's solve that one here so what I'm going to do here is the following. Let's create an if statement. And what I will do here is because then the let width here will be dependent. So I say here new width, and this will be uh, blank. I'm going to just define the value. And this one here will be by default set. That we, what we're going to do now is an if statement. We say if, and then we're going to say here if, I guess here will be the index this is based on the index zero and an index I'm going to assign later on if that is zero then what I want to do here is new width should be zero as well so let me just do this properly and realize that this is not properly indented so if this then here the new width will be just zero so no movement here all right and then else what i want then is this one put it there so if i say this now and i will put it here in zero and save uh or what we need to do here is as well we need to assign an index let's say here constant index equals zero for now and this new width needs to be spelled correctly all right that's all done save refresh so now if i hover over it it doesn't show anything fair enough if i say number one it will show all right but this one will then eventually be pending on the index because it will be whatever it will be here so we just have to later on I can just delete all of these as well and i'll just assign accordingly everything so put in this here all right all right all right so we get this here and if it's zero eventually that will be none so we have this one here so how do we get now the matching item here so to do this we need to look here in our item here well we can just this here needs to be repositioned down here the reason why is it should be only in this if statement with the tooltip if the tooltip is active so that's number one and then from here on we need to work here below so what we're going to do now is basically we're going to look here uh, we need to figure out what is our starting value which would be basically our index here so to do this i'm going to say a constant start value and what i really want to do here is to find the value of it because well let me just show you because probably that would be even better i'm going to say here tool tip and then what i'm going to say here uh console tooltip save 
refresh. All right. So once we hover, uh, all right. Sorry, that is not allowed. I need to grab this probably. Save, refresh. Unexpected token. Where exactly? What is going on? Are we missing here a value? Pa apparently we are. Uh, oh no, sorry, this is it. Make sure you have a bracket here or else you have an issue. And then save that refresh. All right, so now we have this here. Hoover over it and then we have another issue here. I'm going to later check what's the index. Probably have no index yet. But we can see here, we get this specific index. So I'm going to grab this one here and I guess this is our starting value. We say dot and we have this here. So now if I save that and what was the issue here? The issue was, uh, can I access index before initialization? So where's index? Uh, this is the index here. And before initialization, 85. 85 has the index on that. All right, let's save that, try again. Why is it giving me an error? 85 is fine. 89 is the issue. 89 is the index here. All right. You can see here, that's the one. That's what we need to solve. And now we have this one here. So we can just say here the index. So I'm going to say here, constant index equals that. All right. We grab this, put it in there. Then I'm going to remove this index. And this one probably uh, here, oh no, that one we can maintain probably, refresh. And then here we have something else. Hold on, let me check. Oh, all right, so after I check, I realized, of course, this is just the same issue. 89 is, well, this, we, we probably copied all of this. And I guess this should not be here. Uh, what we could do here with this, we're going to cut this out. I'm going to move it down here. Sorry about that. That should be down, of course. So now we have everything here. We have the new width assigned. We have this one assigned. So let's save that refresh. Should it work? There we are. All right, so now we get this one and I guess this is starting to work nicely. And if I do here, nothing happens. So there we are. So what I want to do now is of course assign the color and basically this will become very easy. We can just do it, we can grab this here. And then what I want to do is here is the color. So to get the color, all we need is to look for here in this and what I'm going to do here is remember this item here I'm going to grab this all of it and then what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to make here a new constant and this constant will be BGC which stands for background color bracket and then here closing bracket semicolon there we are so we have all these commas here so this should work so if I grab this one now I'm going to put it in here instead of black i want to have this one then here this will be based on our index save refresh over all right so you can see here now works except for one thing here so this one here or oh this works as well i was expecting here that we might get maybe an error because we're missing maybe a certain color but not really so what we could do maybe if you don't want you want this one to maybe have at least visibility here we could change that one uh, or at least not this but maybe here instead of this blue it's supposed to be red here so what you could do here is the following you can just look here this index we can just say here minus one save that refresh so if i do this here of course here it won't work but it's only for there but here it starts to become red blue yellow etc etc and finally orange so the last one the dark one the gray or the black will not be shown and that's basically how we can play around with it and play and make it a bit more interactive with color. So if I do now a tool tip back, set this on true, save, refresh. There we are. Now we have this, we have tool tips and everything all together it makes it absolutely phenomenal. So if you enjoyed this video and maybe you want to learn more about what we did here, this is basically the chart area. I'm going to recommend you to watch this one, understanding chart area in chart.js which is absolutely crucial because with this, you can do so much more than just only background colors. So I highly recommend to watch this video as well.